Hi everyone, uh, this is Tapiwa and I'm presenting on FAT today. So value added tax is one of the most complex pieces of legislation in any taxation, I think. This is because it has a lot of cross-references and it's very complex to understand. So my suggestion on studying FAT, I know you have already started studying, but if it's not working for you currently, this is my suggested way of studying it go through your slides and your notes go through your textbook and only after that go into your legislation highlight all the important aspects and know the important aspects from your legislation that ensures that when you are reading the legislation you don't necessarily need to be familiar with the legal language and the most complex things that are in there because you already know the principles so if you know the principles you just read that that path and you understand exactly what you're saying because you are aware of the principle but if your method that you're using currently it's working for you and everything as well then by all means continue using that one so i uh, uh, my first uh video is on the vat liability the reason why is because i need to make sure that you understand when does the VAT liability arise and who is liable for VAT for the transaction? If you understand those two things, then you are halfway through uh, your way home. So there are three instances which gives rise to VAT liability and these are listed in section 7, subsection 1. So the first one is supplied by any vendor in the furtherance of an enterprise, which is part A importation of goods into the republic by any person so this is very important uh, part to note here by any person so by any person means that you don't necessarily need to be a vendor in order to be liable for that under uh, subparagraph b but you need to be any person which means you yourself right now you are not a registered fat friend i think if you import any goods you are liable for that under section uh, 71b then on the importation of goods by any person again importation of services sorry so here you need to understand it says importation of any imported services i'm um, sorry about that any imported service so any imported services that you import then you are liable for that but you need to understand what an imported service is and that is the next uh, slide that you need to focus on so before we understand what an imported service we need to understand who is liable for VAT so we, we understood where does the VAT liability arise now we need to understand who is liable for VAT in all the three instances if a vendor makes a supplier a supply then that vendor is liable for VAT under section 7 1a if any person imports the goods then the, that person who imported the goods is liable if any person receives imported services then that recipient is liable so it is critical again i'm saying this again and again thou shall understand what is an imported service so an imported service is a service that is made by a supplier who carries an enterprise outside the republic but this enterprise here doesn't necessarily need to meet the definition of an enterprise in the VAT Act this means it's someone who does who just carries out business outside the republic he should supply this service into the republic that is the recipient of this republic of this service should be into the republic and one last critical part of that definition that should be used for non-taxable supplies so you don't need to be a VAT vendor to be liable for VAT on imported service but you need to use them for non-taxable supply so we have a quick example there john andrews purchased a printer software from samsung industries built in the united kingdom for 25,000 john andrews not a VAT vendor so applying our definition this service was supplied by a supplier who carries enterprise outside the republic they are based in the uk so that one is check to meet that then to the extent that used for non-taxable supply john andrews is not a registered vat vendor therefore 
we need that because if you are not registered for defend that means everything you do is not is in, is in any taxable so then that one applies so it is important for us to understand that previous slides before we move forward then value of supply on this point ladies and gentlemen i encourage you to first pause the video right now go into legislation and understand two important definitions consideration and value of supply you need to understand it those if you don't understand them pause the video right now go and study them then come back if you get into trouble or you're not understanding it after studying and uh, pitch me a call or contact me and i'll make sure that i help you as far as possible to understand therefore then the value of service the the time of supply for imported service is the early of the invoice date and the amount of payment so if you pay something before the invoice then the date of payment is the time of supply if you invoice then pay later the time of the invoice is the time of supply then the value of supply is the greater of the consideration this consideration doesn't necessarily mean including that this just means the amount on the invoice or the open market value the open market value is your fair value this one we understand what it means i'm like to assume that so let's attempt a simple example so james is a non vendor in the republic he runs a security company out of uh, forget that this one is an error there out of Mitchell's plane in the Western Cape. As part of his security upgrade, he used the services of John the Reaper. I'm sorry, I like uh, tech stuff, and John the Reaper is something that is used or to, to crack passwords or necessarily to test password strength. So I like, I was learning about that thing. So to test strength of his password, the service provider charged him 115,000 payable on the 31st of March 2020. What are the first implications? So the first point that we need to understand is John the Reaper need not to be a VAT vendor. So John the Reaper is not a VAT vendor just by assumption of this question for us to start dealing with imported service. Then the second thing we need to understand is this person is paying VAT output and not claiming VAT input. Why? Because by definition an imported service is used for non taxable supplies then what is the fat output that he needs to pay this number there is the value of supply which means it excludes fat therefore the fat that you need to pay to SARS is 115,000 multiply this by 15 percent so it is very critical that we do understand what exactly is value of supply and what is consideration so the term of supply earlier of the invoice date or the payment the value of supply is the higher of the consideration or the invoice amount and the open market value of that service then on the imported goods side this is where it gets very critical for you to understand the difference between an imported good and imported service. An imported service is something that is used for non-taxable supplies. So we need to make sure that you understand that. If you are not sure, just uh, move the video back and start listening on the imported services because it's very critical to understand the difference between an imported service and an imported goods. So the value of supply for imported goods is quite simple but quite a nice calculation that can earn you a lot of marks if you understand and you present it well so you take the value for customs purposes this is the value that the customs and the customs authorities use to calculate their customs duty then you add 10 percent of the value of customs so this one is 10 percent of that only then after that you add the duty that is payable in terms of the customs and excise act then after that you multiply it by that by 15 percent why are we multiplying by 15 percent and not 15 of 115 because we are using the value of supply and not the consideration 
then you need to understand that the BLNS countries, this is Botswana, Lesotho, Namibia, and Swaziland, these countries are in the customs union, therefore, this 10% there is out. The calculation is the same except that 10% there is, is out. We also need to know the uh, Southern African Customs Union where there is no customs duty, so it's usually an assumed general knowledge that you need to do that if you don't need to do that just go and research which countries are in the southern african customs union which doesn't pay customs duty when their goods are imported into south into south africa i think uh, namibia is one of them botswana i'm not sure of the other two but you need just to make sure you understand those countries then we need to make sure that this calculation there is for output tax that is VAT output then when calculating this it doesn't matter whether these goods you use them for taxable supplies or non taxable supplies by the virtue of just importing them you pay output tax but this import now is now determined by whether you are using these goods for import for taxable or non taxable so this is where you need to be very sure you first calculate the output tax and then think about the input tax so for imported goods there is both implications of input input and output tax so this is where only i think this is the only part where you you are like you are dealing with input and output tax on the same transaction it doesn't happen i'm sure it doesn't happen so we have a short example to help us understand so an imported machine from a imported machine from thailand and on arrival on the port of Andrew customs value was determined to be 750,000. the customs duty was charged at 65,000, and was and the machine will be used to make taxable supplies of 75 percent so customs value is 75,000, customs duty 65,000 and used to make 75% export supply. What are the VAT implications? So if you were listening properly to my explanations before you can pause the video right now and try to determine the VAT implications, try to calculate the VAT, then continue to check your answer and see if you missed anything and then boost your principles. So, like I said, the first part that we need to think about is our output part. And the output tax is what we need to first think about. Let me use a different color there. The first thing we need to do is output. So, we say do you take the customs value, you take the customs, this is the customs duty, then you take 10% of the said value. What is the said value? This is the wording in the act. It says said value, and the said value is customs. So 10% of that is 75,000, which gives us the total value of supply of 890,000. That output is calculated at 15%. Why? Because we are using the value of supply and not consideration. If you are using consideration, then it's 15 of 115. If it's the value of supply, it means that amount exclude VAT, therefore it's 15%. Then your output is 133,500. But then I intentionally left the input part of that transaction. And the input is very simple. We agreed that this thing is being used for 75% taxable supplies, then you just claiming input of 133,500 times 75%. Times 75%. And it's very critical and interesting to note that if you are using it for 100% taxable supplies, then your net effect of that is zero because you are paying 100% VAT and you are also claiming 100% VAT. So your VAT implication is 0%, 0 there. But if you are using it for less than 100%, then you pay, you claim input tax only on the difference. And this is where that principle then ties into the VAT, to the imported service, where we say the imported service, you only pay VAT on 
when you are it meets the definition of imported service that is used for non-taxable supply and the net effect even though the calculation is different and you need to do this calculation differently it's interesting to know that you claimed fat you paid fat output of 133,000 and you claimed input tax of 75% so only you paid SARS 25% which is the portion for non taxable supply which would be the same if this thing was an imported service so it's important for you to grasp these principles and understand so my next video will be on the deemed uh, supplies and etc etc just moving forward with the principles but my hope is that you understood these short principles and you will contact me and ask me any questions and make any requests and we'll help each other out until you are out of this course and you make sure that we we'll pass this year and get done with this CTA or third year or whatever you're studying this year this year you need to move forward and my hope is I'm going to help you through it and you help yourself by studying so thank you very much and I hope you enjoyed